Hey, Bart Miller with Cycling Strong. I am so excited to bring this video to you because this is a project I've wanted to do for a really, really long time. So this project, we're going to actually take some Envy wheels. We're using wide industry uh, hubs to be able to build these out and they're a total custom build on these wheels. Now, what makes this fun is not only do we have an amazing wheel and an amazing hub, but we got an amazing wheel builder. Brian makes the most amazing custom bike you'll ever see out there, and he also makes custom wheels. I think the reason I do it isn't necessarily because, uh, you know, more for profit or gain. It's uh, I'm passionate about bicycles, and I love building them, and I love riding them. So, great part of custom bicycles is custom wheels. So, having Bart here today to show him how to build some custom wheels up, it's gonna be a lot of fun. These yeah. are two great products. American made products, NV rims, white industry hub, just like my bike. We're gonna quit talking, we're gonna have some fun, we're gonna build some wheels. I've never done this before, so you'll get some good laughs probably what you'll see here, but uh, we're gonna have some fun and just enjoy ourselves, so let's get going. First thing we're gonna do is we've got, you got two sides of the spokes, right? Okay. So Why do they use two sides of the spokes? All right. So with your rear hub, yep. you got a drive side okay. and a non-drive side. Okay. Drive side is obviously the side that the cassette goes on. Right. Uh, you can see this is called the flange. Okay. The flange diameter is larger on one side than it is on the other. Ah, a, wheel, a wheel also has offset. Take this wheel that we built up earlier, and if you look down it, okay. you can see that it has offset. See that the yep. spokes are more tensioned out this yep. way. Yep. So. Uh, in order to compensate for that, White Industry has made the flange larger on one side. I'm assuming every wheel set's the same way that way, right? Uh, for the most part. Okay. Um, I mean, there are some other designs out there, and a lot of it depends on, you know, the set size. Okay. 11 speed, 10 speed, yep. single speed. Okay. Uh, all that can make a difference on, you know, the offset. Okay. You know, if you were to take this and split it down the center, mm -hmm. then, you know, obviously this side is closer, right. closer than that, that side. Yep. Okay. okay. So, what we're gonna do is you have two sizes of spokes right. to compensate for that offset okay. and that flange diameter. You got a shorter side and a longer side. One's the drive side and one's the non-drive side. Okay. okay. So we don't wanna mix those up. Right. Now, can I ask you a quick question? <coughs> Some guys, I think when I saw this one other time, and I've only actually seen a wheel built one time, they put different colors on the right. tips of this. Is that the reason they do that? Yeah, and okay. we're gonna do that. And that's oh. gonna be your job. There you go. <laughs> Woo I got a job. So excited. <laughs> this is called spoke prep. Okay. Uh, it's made by Will Smith. All right. And what it does is it not only you know distinguishes a right and a left spoke. Okay. But it also uh, acts as a compound that allows the nipple to thread on easy, but it also almost like a Loctite, hmm. like a really light Loctite. Right. So the spoke doesn't or the spoke nipple doesn't loosen up. Cool. Because the spoke nipple loosens up, then your wheel comes out of true. Not a good idea. Right. So. This is what you're gonna do. Okay. Oh, you're gonna open this up. Yep. And so we got a drive side and non-drive side. Yep. See this side's blue. Yep. And you're just gonna roll the tip in there. Okay. Like that. See that? See how I find a little bit there and right. just kind of coat the end. Okay. Then we'll lay that out to dry. Gotcha. Okay. You got pink. Sweet. See, I'm bound to get these hubs, these pink hubs. So I just want to double check here, make sure we got the right spoke length, which were provided to us. So we're just going to double check them. That is a. Shorter. I'm assuming that's a spoke measuring. Yeah, tool. you stuck it there. It's made by Park Tool. Okay. Every bike shop I have one of these is hanging around. Okay, so these are going to be our drive spokes, and that's what we're going to start with. Okay. It's our drive side. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to locate the valve hole. Okay. Right there, and then we're gonna locate our uh, our drive side, and I like to line up the. Uh, okay, so I have to ask you: Have you ever done one backwards before? Oh, well, when I first learned, yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> I can just totally see me doing that. Like well, I mean, there's not gold. there's not backwards necessarily with the NV rims, right? Um, because the holes are all in line, but right. some some wheels have a right and a left side. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, you don't see that. As, it's not as common as it used to be, but I mean, that's funny. NV wheels. You can flip them either way. Oh, that'd be the, the most worst. most part, you'd be all right. Yeah, so, okay. Okay, we're going to start with what we call Audis. And the Audis are spoke 
that is going to have an out, or you could, innies are going to be more like this, where the spoke head is on the inside. Hmm. Oh wait, that's opposite. There you go, there's an innie. Gotcha. See that? Okay. So we're going to start with the outies. Okay. And we're going to drop these in every other hole. So, we've got innies and outies, two on each side, right? Okay. You know, it, does that make sense? So now we're gonna go, we're gonna skip, skip a hole. Yep. four holes, All three four holes. Because you gotta have the other side. Right. right. And you said three, right? Yep, so we're gonna right. have two on one side, right? Or well, how many holes is, is this room? 24? Yeah, so we're gonna have 12 on each side. Six outies, 16 on one side. Okay, so we got the first ones in there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rotate the wheel, and I'm gonna locate, if I were to look through this hole, Obviously, it's going to bisect two, uh, two holes here on the flange, right? Yep. I want to take the one to the right, or the next spoke. I don't want to go on the other side of the valve stem. And that'll play a, a role later. Okay. Don't understand why. So, let me just make sure I understand that. So, when you're looking through, right, right you now, see those holes don't line up. Right, exactly. Right? So, uh -huh. I want to take the one to the side so that one, if I'm looking through this one, it'd be that one. Right, right, but I don't want to go on the opposite side of the valve stem of okay. the initial spoke right. that we started with. So I want to go, go on the, the opposite, the other oh, side, okay. directly adjacent to it. Okay. Okay. Same thing. Man, you got pink all over that one. No, sorry. I did not want it to come out while I was riding, and I was worried. <laughs> so. We're gonna drop that in there and uh, do the same process as you just did, right? Just on yep. the opposite side. On the opposite side. Man, it's like a serious process here of trying not to, I think you'd end up bending the spoke. Well, you kind of can bend and move the spokes around. I mean, you don't wanna to be too forceful. I'm assuming that's our last one. Yep. Okay. All right. So, this is the spoke I'm going to grab right there. Mm -hmm. And it goes in this next hole. All right, now let's go back to where we were with the um, drive side. All right, and what we want to do is rotate it away. See how we're twisting the spokes mm -hmm. away from the valve stem. Okay. okay, and from there, what we're going to do is we can do that and go back to our drive side. And then we will drop a spoke and pull in an any instead of an owie. Okay. And this is going to be a two cross setup. So we'll come under that one, meaning we'll come under, then we'll go over and into that hole. That wasn't confusing at all. No. Hmm. That's... So you went under. You went over and then oh, did you go so forward? So it's two cross. So they do a two cross. There's radial lace and we'll radial lace the front wheel. And they do a two cross, three cross. I mean, there's several different patterns. Sometimes they'll do a radial lace on one side and a double or triple cross on the uh, opposing side. Mm -hmm. And what we did is we went, it's a two cross. We're going to cross the spokes twice. 
Oh, okay. Makes sense. So what we did is we came. So you crossed this spoke came here. Came under that one and one. over that one. Mm -hmm. That's the laced up wheel. And then you take it from here, go put it in the truing stand and really get serious about getting it fine tuned. Start tension in it. Sweet. So now is the front. Now to do it all over again. Now you do it all over in, again. So. So I'm assuming, looking at that though, would you, because this is obviously, the front, and I can't tell by my eye if those are both the same height or not. They are. So they have the that same mean... flange diameter. The only time that would change, uh, you know, the disc hub. Oftentimes they'll make you know one flange will be larger than the other, or there'll be an offset. Okay. Uh, one flange will be in a little bit further than the other to compensate for uh, the disc. Got you. So I'm assuming that all our spokes would be the same length on this one. They are. Okay. So cool. not necessarily matter what kind of spoke prep you put on them. Uh, what color? As long as we use the same length of spokes. Gotcha. Okay. Want me to get to work? Okay. So if I remember, just a few things I got to do oh. first is I got to find where the spoke—not with the spoke, but where the tire. So the right there, stem. valve stem goes right here. So that's right. how we had our last one. So I'm gonna go back to that. Now these are gonna be easy because every one of them is gonna be a any. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. We're going to do this one called radio lace straight. No okay. cross or anything. So we can drop all these in on this side. Just so everybody knows, I went with pink just so I've got a little pink so I can say I'm tough enough. And then do you look at this as far as, okay, let's say on that one, it's got the T11. Do you want that on the same side on the front or the rear? It's not gonna matter because the wheels can go either way. Yeah, it really doesn't make any difference with the hub. Uh, one thing I like to do is <clears throat> line up the logo with the valve stand. There's no rule saying that you have to. Right. But, there we go. And then on this side, it's just every other hole. Okay. That one's much easier, isn't it? Yeah, oh man. <laughs> yeah, kind of a no-brainer. Except I could drop a nipple in there. Bada bing. Okay. okay. Let's go do this one. This one will go much easier. So, I mean, it, pretty basic. You got, you know, a uh, left and right side. And these spokes are obviously, the more tension on this spoke, the more it'll pull the wheel this direction, right. the more tension on these spokes. And so if you want to treat the wheel, so say it's rubbing on the left side, mm -hmm. you can either tighten the right side or loosen the left side. Um, if it's an up and down thing, like the wheel's not straight up and down, then that becomes a matter of tightening a group of spokes, and potentially loosening a group of spokes, which that becomes a little bit more 
complicated. So the black thing holds it so it doesn't spin, that keeps it straight. Yeah, bladed spoke. You don't want to wind them up, twist them. These are bladed sapien spokes. And uh, this just keeps them from twisting. <clears throat> so when a wheel comes out of the mold, mm -hmm. I mean, so these are a molded wheel. They come out of a, a, a metal mold and that metal, that metal mold's perfect. And so when this frame comes out, um, when this frame comes out, it's round, it's straight. So the spokes, what they do is they provide you know, strength and stability to the wheel by having tension. And what's important in building a strong wheel is having these spokes uh, equally tensioned. Um, now, you know, on a rear wheel, you have one side that's tensioned more than the other. Mm -hmm. And so is the drive side tensioned more than the other to, to get the wheels dish that we discussed earlier. So what I'm trying to do is slowly bring this wheel up to tension. So I've got a question. Mm -hmm. Let's say after watching this video, I say, oh, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend me going out and trying to build a wheel like this myself? No. <laughs> Not this wheel. Yeah, I was gonna say, if I, I don't, I mean, Brian knows more than I, but this is a pretty high-end wheel yeah. to make your first build on. I mean, if you were gonna take an inexpensive, you know, go buy you some hoops or, I don't know, you get some hoops, I imagine, for like 25, 30 bucks, maybe. Yeah, you get some inexpensive wheels. I just practice on something inexpensive, yeah. maybe, I don't know, but. First thing to do is learn how to true them, straighten a wheel. And I, I think everyone, you know, a lot of people could learn how to do that. It doesn't take a lot of special equipment. I mean, you can start with a spoke wrench. Kind of learn the basics of truing before you ever take on. Right. I mean, when I decided that I was going to do this project <laughs> and get these, that was one thing that, you know, uh, Envy and everybody else wanted to know was who, who's going to build because obviously it's important to them to uh, to know that the project's going to be able to, to work, right? And not just have what, you know, like myself, just decide I was going to take into to building these, so um, I think what what Brian's saying is is it's fun to play, but play on, start with the simple things, and then work yourself to build a full set. So right now that gauge is just telling me how much each one of these are tensioned to at this point. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so I'm gonna start bringing the wheel into tension. Oh, we got a few more steps here, but I'm just more like roughing it in. All right, so to wrap up really quick, you saw that uh, you know we have a drive side, a non-drive side. You gotta see all the different reasons when you're building a wheel, things to look at, things to think about. And uh, Brian, I think, taught us a lot. I, I learned a lot. It was kind of fun putting that front wheel together. So appreciate you doing all that, putting up yeah. with us and uh, having a little bit of fun. It's a lot of work to put two wheels together, two full sets, lace them all up, get them out there. So hopefully you enjoyed this segment. segment and uh, we'll be doing some more stuff. Thanks a lot, Brian, for doing that. Appreciate you showing us all the different things, why you do stuff, how you build them, things to think about. And remember, if you're gonna do your first wheel, don't start at this high end of a wheel. Make sure you start on something you can just true and play around with. Anything you wanna to add to that? A lot of fun. Appreciate right. the opportunity to do it. Okay, talk to you guys later. Keep cycling strong. <laughs>